Hi, hello, how are ya? Chef Kennedy here. Today we're doing things a little different. We're gonna combine two of my favorite things, true crime and cooking. Did you know that before an execution, prisoners can choose their final meal? Well, today we're going to cook the last meal of a well-known serial killer. Peter Curtin, or the Vampire of Dusseldorf, really sucked, but let's see if his last meal was killer. How this will work is I will tell you Peter's twisted story that led to his execution while I prepare the meal before trying it myself. Peter Curtin, or the Vampire of Dusseldorf, requested a wiener schnitzel, fried potatoes, and white wine for his final meal. Trigger warning. I have tried to leave out as many gory details as possible, but this story is dark. So if it's too much for you, feel free to mute me, play some jazz, and enjoy the cooking visuals. Peter Curtin was born in Cologne, Germany on May 26, 1883. A Gemini, we should have known. His father was an abusive alcoholic who would beat and rape his family. At the tender age of nine, the first signs of Peter's troubled mind began to show itself. He was rafting on the river with friends when he pushed one friend in the water. The other friend began to protest, which led to Peter drowning both boys. Authorities deemed this an accident. As a poor and troubled young man, Peter Curtin was in and out of prison for 24 years. His first provable murder happened in 1913 when he slashed and strangled a 10-year-old girl. Two months later, he did the same thing to a 17-year-old girl as she slept in her bed. Peter enjoyed listening to the townspeople discuss the horrific crimes and would even talk to police at the scene of the crime, pretending to be a concerned citizen. By 1925, Peter was married to a former sex worker and they moved to Dusseldorf. The height of Peter's reign of terror occurred in the summer of 1929 when he killed six people in one month. Peter's preferred method of killing was with a pair of scissors and he got off on hearing the blood splattering of his victims. His nickname, the Vampire of Dusseldorf, came into play after he murdered two sisters and engaged in cannibalism by drinking the younger victim's blood. By 1930, the police were getting close to capturing this monster and offered a hefty reward for any information. In an attempt to help his wife with the impending doom, Peter confessed his crimes to her so she could turn him in in exchange for the reward. He confessed to 68 crimes, 10 murders, and 31 attempted murders. He showed no remorse or empathy for his victims and claimed retribution of his own punishments for being the motivating factor. He was found guilty of murder and received nine death sentences.
Shortly before his execution, Peter asked the prison psychiatrist, Tell me, after my head has been chopped off, will I be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. In July of 1931, Peter Curtin is given his final meal before being beheaded by the guillotine. Okay, so here we have the last meal of the Vampire of Dusseldorf. Now, Peter Curtin requested Wienerschnitzel, fried potatoes, and a bottle of wine for his last meal. I made it, you know, a little me, and I did vegan, of course, because we're not monsters and we don't eat baby cows in this household. Then I paired it with a butter, lettuce, cucumber, caper salad, something that's traditionally served with Wiener Schnitzel. And then I did purple potatoes, just for some flair and color into this dreary, sad dish. Okay, so let's give it a try. Mm, it looks so good. That's a good Wiener Schnitzel. I've never had Wiener Schnitzel, but it's good. These cucumbers, mm, they look so delightful. I feel like the cucumber situation is the perfect thing to accompany all this kind of like heavy fried situation that's going on. But speaking of fried, let's try the purple sweet potato fries. Mm. These are so nice and crispy on the outside. Super soft, a little sweet and salty action. Love it. Well, this dish is very delicious. I'm glad that I got to experience it even though, you know, Peter, I don't believe in anything you do, but you do have good taste, I will say. Ooh, I haven't even had any of the wine. Cheers, y'all. That cuts nicely against the fried food, I will say. Fun fact, Peter Curtin asked for seconds after completing his meal and his bottle of wine, and he was granted it. I'm not sure if he deserved it, but this was definitely fun. Please leave me a comment down below of what your last meal would be, and don't forget to like and subscribe. From my kitchen to yours, Chef Kennedy out.